guys, it's Adrian over VHA here bringing you a new video. So this is a new dashboard that I found. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's called Tileboard. So I've been running HA Dashboard for a while. I, I've always liked it. It's pretty awesome. It has a lot of features. But I always thought that having to install App Daemon just for HA Dashboard was probably overkill. Um, I just don't use App Daemon for anything else. This is Tileboard. Uh, it's much leaner. I think it runs pretty smoothly. Has pretty much all the same features as uh, HA Dashboard plus some additional features. It's very customizable. Hit me up in the comments below. Tell me which one you like better, uh, HA Dashboard or Tileboard. I'm curious to hear your input and your reason why you like one or the other. But here we go. This is a tutorial of how to install and set up Tileboard in a Docker container. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So first, we're going to download all of the Tileboard files. Once we do that, we are ready to install Tileboard in Docker. Uh, after we do that, we need to uh, set the listening port of that Docker container so that it's listening on the port that we want it to. Once it's done, we're ready to configure Tileboard. Once we have Tileboard configured, we're going to add a component into Tileboard. And lastly, of course, I'm just going to show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. So basically, here is the GitHub page for Tileboard. This is what we're going to be installing today. Uh, so take a look at this GitHub page. Check it out. It's got lots of information, some uh, screenshots of what some of the Tileboards look like. Very cool stuff. Check it out before you do the install, just to kind of see what you're getting yourself into. So basically, I'm just going to do a sudo git clone of that uh, GitHub page for Tileboard to download all those Tileboard files. And I'll put this in the description below so you can just copy and paste it. But once that's downloaded, it should create a folder called Tileboard. Um, we're going to CD into it just to show you what that looks like. So you can see all the files that it automatically downloaded into the folder. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so now we are going to install a uh, Docker container for Tileboard. So they don't actually have a specific Docker container for Tileboard. So we're basically going to just install a Docker container that has a web server in it and point it at those Tileboard config files so that we can use that as our Tileboard web server. And again, this is a fairly lengthy command. I'll put it in the description below so you can copy and paste it. But we're going to start by doing a sudo docker run dash d. And then, of course, I'll give it a name of Tileboard. I'm going to set restart equals always. You can set whatever port you want. Uh, I'm just going to make mine 5051. Not sure where I came up with that, but that's what we're going to go with. So I did a dash P 5051 colon 5051. Uh, now we're going to do a dash V. And we want to point it at that tileboard directory that we created. So mine, of course, is in home, Adrian tileboard. And then we're going to point that into the HT docs directory. So that's a slash user slash local slash Apache 2 slash HT docs. And then lastly, we just need to list that Docker hub. So this one is HTTPD colon 2.4 um, give that a second to download and then we're going to just hop over to portainer and take a look at it make sure everything is set up correctly uh, let's see here we're going to click on containers and click on tileboard so as you can see it's been up and running for about seven minutes now everything looks good Got the volume set up correctly. I think we are ready to move on to the next step. All 
All right, so we need to set up a listening port for uh, the Apache web server. So basically we set up the listening port for the container itself, but inside the container, the Apache web server also has to be set to listen on a specific port as well. I think by default it's port 80 and we're gonna change it to 5051. So of course, to edit the Apache web server uh, config files inside of a Docker container, we need to do a Docker exec dash IT tileboard, which is the name of our uh, container, slash bin slash bash. This will drop us right into the container. Now, in order to edit files in the container, we need to install Vim. Uh, there is not a uh, editor by default. So we'll do an apt get update. That'll take it a second to run through. And once that update is finished, now we're ready to do an apt get install uh, Vim. Give that a second to install as well. Now fast forward through this, we're not waiting around for it to finish. All right, now that it is installed, let's go ahead and move into the conf directory. So we'll do a CD conf. And we want to edit the httpd.conf file. And we're looking for a section that says listen ports. There it is, uh, listen 80. We're going to change that from an 80 to 5051. Go ahead and save that. And then we can, of course, exit out and move on to the next step. All right, so now we are ready to make a, a few configuration changes to tileboard, just to basically point it at our uh, home assistant configuration so it knows where to go for that. Uh, so we're gonna move into that tileboard directory. All right, so they make a, an example config file inside of the tileboard directory. We basically are just gonna copy that and change the name to config.js. So there's that config.example.js file. We're going to do a uh, sudo cp config.example.js config.js. So now we are ready to edit the config.js file. And we want to scroll down to where it says server URL. And you're going to change this to whatever your URL is for Home Assistant. If you're running it with a duck DNS or anything like that, you're going to have HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, whatever. I'm currently just running it locally uh, without duck DNS or any kind of secure um, external access. So we're just going to do uh, HTTP, colon, slash, slash, 10.10.10.5, which is the host of this Docker server. And then, of course, 8123 is the port I'm using. The same thing will be for the WS URL. Now I will tell you if you are using HTTPS uh, for your home assistant setup, then where it says WS colon slash slash, you need to change that to WSS. That is for a secure setup. Once we update that IP address, then we're going to go ahead and add in a lines for our password. So password type colon, and we're gonna say password underscore types dot manual, because we're typing it in, and then password, and then whatever our password is in parentheses here. Go ahead and save that. Now we need to jump over to Portainer to restart tileboard. So we're going to select tileboard here, do a restart. All right. 
All right, so basically here we are. This is our tile board setup. Uh, now we access this by going to 10.10.10.5 10 10 10 colon 5051 slash index.html. And they're obviously this is just their default configuration with whatever uh, components they have in there by default. All right, so we're going to add a component into Tileboard here just to kind of show you how that's done. And as you can see here uh, on their GitHub page, there's pretty much an example for every component they have configured in Tileboard. So the one that we're going to be doing uh, just for my example here is we're going to do a outside uh, temperature sensor. And uh, the great thing about these is they have the code and everything there, so you can copy and paste them if you want. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to set up. But basically, in order to do that, we're going to edit the config.js file. And I'm going to scroll down here to uh, let's see where the update component was, the one that was erroring out. Since we don't have an updater to updater component on my configuration, uh, that's not going to work. So we're going to scroll down here to that. We'll delete some of those lines there, and then we're just going to add in some new ones. So basically, you saw what that sensor uh, component looks like, and that's what we're going to add here. So the type is going to be types.sensor. Uh, the title, I'm just going to say outside temp. ID, this will be the actual entity ID of that uh, sensor in Home Assistant. So this one is sensor dot dark underscore sky underscore temperature. And the unit uh, for me is Fahrenheit. The state, we're just going to set that to false. I don't think we need that for this type of uh, component. And the rest of this is just what is already listed there for this component. I'm just going to kind of type it in there. I'm not 100% sure what it does, but I think it has something to do with if for some reason that sensor is coming back with a uh, something other than a number. Once we get all this in there, we can go ahead and save it. And of course, we're going to move over to Portainer to restart Tileboard just for those changes to take effect. So we'll select Tileboard here uh, and uh, restart. And that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so lastly, here we are um, back at the tileboard page. 
As you can see here, now there is a new sensor down here that displays the outside temperature. That's the one that we just added. So not super hard to add components. And with all the examples that they have on their GitHub page, it certainly makes it easy to get stuff added in there. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you liked the video. Uh, like I said, Tileboard is just another way to set up a dashboard for Home Assistant. Uh, if you're not as happy with HA Dashboard, then certainly give Tileboard a try. Again, I want to know in the comments which one you like better and tell me the pros and cons or, or why you might like one or the other. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. We started by downloading the Tileboard files from GitHub. Uh, once we did that, then we were ready to install Tileboard in Docker. Uh, after that was done, we set the listening port from within the uh, Apache 2 config in the Docker container. After that, we configured Tileboard from the config.json file. After that, we are ready to add a component into Tileboard just to kind of show you how that was done. And then lastly, uh, we showed you what it looked like in action. Like I said, again, that's the end of the video, guys. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And as always, if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.